There are seven steps to use an interrupt in your program. The first step is to write the interrupt service routine. The interrupt service routine is a function just like any other function but with some special syntax that we'll see shortly. One thing that this interrupt service routine has to do is clear the interrupt request, the IRQ flag, which is in the register IFSX. So the interrupt was generated in the first place because a bit in, I, in the register IFSX was set to 1. So we have to set it back to 0 to say we've already taken care of that interrupt. The next thing you have to do is disable the interrupts at your CPU. Now what this does is it says to the CPU, don't accept any interrupt requests until I enable you again. This allows you to set the, or configure your interrupt requests in ISR uh, without danger of accidentally tri triggering an interrupt while that's happening. So you're going to tell the CPU, don't process any interrupts until further notice. The third step is you're going to configure some device to generate interrupts. So for example, our alarm sensor, it might be a digital input, and you're going to configure it so that when that input changes from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0, that it should create an IRQ uh, to call an interrupt service routine. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to set the priority of the interrupt service routine. And to do this, you're going to manipulate bits in the interrupt priority control register Y, where Y corresponds to your particular interrupt. The next step, you're going to clear the interrupt flag just to make sure that the interrupt is not already being requested, so that you do this by manipulating the appropriate bit to zero of the IFSX register. Next, you're going to enable the IRQ so that the CPU will start paying attention to this particular IRQ. And you'll do that by manipulating the interrupt enable control bit of the appropriate interrupt enable control register. And then finally, the last thing you're going to do is you're going to enable interrupts at the CPU again. So this command here reverses number two. And now this, this part just said, I can start generating interrupts, but not until we do number seven does the CPU start paying attention to them. So you do all seven of these steps, and now your program can start using interrupt service routines. And we'll see an example of that in code next.